Hello everyone, my name is Byron Lepke and it is my privilege to bring you season's greetings, a Merry Christmas and blessings to the New Year on behalf of my family and the entire staff at Book Division. This year we're going to be doing a reading from a book that was published by one of our publishers, Polyglot Publishing, called The Night Before a Canadian Christmas. Not so bad, eh? Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to read the book. Is that all right? Okay. Well, it begins. T'was the night before Christmas, and all around the house. Not a creature was stirring except for a moose. Oh. Yeah, when, yeah, when the lights had been hung in the front yard with care, oh. no one had expected a moose to pass there. <laughs> it's too much. It's just too much. It's just too much. <laughs> The children in Long John's were snug in their beds while visions of poutine danced in their heads. Mom and her house coat turned on the TV and on came the hockey game on CBC. From the snow shovel driveway there came such a clatter. I leapt from the Chesterfield to see what was the matter. The moose had been spooked by something in the sky, something in the distance, too far for my eyes. As the northern lights sparkled over fresh fallen snow, the moose fled the scene with my skidoo in tow. Mum pointed and screamed, but I didn't believe her. She said, look, it's a sled pulled by eight flying beaver. With a bearded old driver and a big bright red toque, either it was Santa or I was a kook. Faster than an oncoming CPR train, they hurtled toward us as he called them by name. Now Gretzky, now Trudeau, now Shania and Looney. Oh, Bob and on Doug on Suzuki and Toonie. Forget the chimney, cried Santa Claus with a roar. There's smoke, so we'd better just use the back door. For all over Canada on this cold winter's night, for warmth, everyone had their fires alight. So with a full load of toys to the back deck they flew, where they landed beside the old barbecue. Then Santa came in while the beavers took rest. It was then that I noticed how Santa was dressed. A turtleneck under a red couch and sweater. Don Cherry's tailor couldn't do better. His pants were made of red polar fleece, embroidered with pictures of Canada geese. A huge sack of toys was slung over his back, like a cross-country skier equipped with a pack. I offered him some milk, said it wasn't any trouble, but he said he would prefer a nice warm double-double. From his head to his boots, he was covered in snow, he had frozen eyelashes, it was thirty below. He had fluffy white eyebrows with bright eyes underneath, and his big beard had the appearance of a big white maple leaf. He had a lumberjack's physique except for his pot belly that shook when he laughed like a salad made of jelly. He put gifts in all the stockings and around the Christmas tree. There were wonders there for everyone, everyone but me. There were snowshoes for the kids that they would use on Christmas Day. And to Mum he gave a blanket, which came from Hudson's Bay. Then he handed me a present, and I knew I was in luck. A brand new set of tire chains for my pickup truck. He touched his finger to his nose and just stepped out into the night, where his beaver team were on the deck having a snowball fight. He whistled, and they all took their places at the sled and took off through the sky in a streaking blur of red. And this is what he shouted as they up and flew away. Merry Christmas, Canada, and to all a good night. Eh? Happy holidays. Merry Christmas from Winter Manitoba, Canada. Merry Christmas, everyone. Power of a maple tree.